Hello guys and welcome back to another exciting blender tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this boiling pot hanging over a fire. So I'll just quickly put it in solid mode so you can see um, how it actually goes in real time. We are going to be doing this in Eevee and um, it's going to be pretty simple. I'd say it's beginner friendly but if you know absolutely nothing about Blender you should probably learn the basics first. I'll put my original Blender files on my Patreon. What you see here is what I'm going to be showing you how to do. The only thing I'm really not going to cover is pretty much just the steam part but that's definitely something um, that you don't have to have. The overall thing here I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do it and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started. Okay so I've got a new scene open up in Blender and what I'm going to do is I'm I'm going to select the default cube. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go shift a and going to the mesh options. Let's add in a UV sphere. Now to make this shape a little bit more like a pot, we're going to tab into our edit mode and in the front orthographic view, um, let's just enable our proportional editing and let's just select just the bottom vertex like that. In our front orthographic view, we're going to go G, Z and we're going to just move this up like that just to round out the bottom a little bit more. And then we're gonna just, let's go actually here to our X-ray mode. So we can select for the mesh. We're gonna select all of this top half here like that and go X and delete those verts. And now we have something that looks a little bit more like a pot. So we're gonna turn off our proportional editing. We're gonna select these verts over here. We're gonna go E to extrude and Z, extrude it up on the Z like so. And then S to scale it a little bit, then E to extrude again, S to scale. And then G, just bring it up a little bit. We just want a little bit of a lip. You can do that however you want, just something along those lines. Tab back out and then go right click, shade smooth, we're in object mode. And let's go over to our modifiers and let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. And let's also give it a solidify modifier. We're now going to come over here to the thickness and drag that into the positives like that. So we can now turn off our X-ray toggle it off and here we have our pot okay you can make that however you want you can actually drag the subdiv underneath the solidify and that looks even better um, work on this however much you want we're going to go g z and move it up just so it's sitting on our ground or just above the ground here we'll adjust it later so now that the pot's done let's make the handles we're going to go shift a we're going to go plane add in a plane let's go g X and move it over to the side. So in the front view, you can see it's over here to the left. We're just going to tab into edit mode S to scale it down. And then we're going to go S Y, scale it along the Y. Control R, hovering over here, you can see the yellow line. Roll your middle mouse button up just once to create in two segments and then left click twice. And with both of these new cuts or inserts selected, we're going to go S Y and scale it along the Y. So we just added in those two loops there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in to our edge select, select this edge here, holding in shift, select this edge. And then you're gonna go E, X, and extrude along the X like that. And then you're gonna just select the whole thing actually and go G, X, and move it here so that that origin point there in the middle, that little orange dot, is towards the end here. So now what we can do is we can tab back out. Let's give this a solidify as well, give it some thickness. And let's also give it a subdivision surface modifier. Tab back in and what we can do is just select these two edges here and then go E to extrude and X and extrude them a little bit. And that'll help with that faces towards the end there with the subdivision surface modifier. So what we can do is in object mode, we can now take this and go G in our front view, move it up here. And instead of like rotating in here, we'll just tab into edit mode. And inside of edit mode, you can grab these verts over here move them up, you can go to your top view and you can select these down here and go S, Y and scale it in along the Y just a little bit. But you can see where I'm coming at with this. Um, pretty easy stuff. You can control R, roll in two more loops or edges over here and go S, Y and scale along the Y to tighten it up. But you get the general idea. You can also add one just here in the middle, control R, then G, X and move it out a little bit. Try different things for different shapes. But you get the idea here. Once you're happy, you can just right click, shade smooth in your object mode and there you have a handle. An easy way to get that to the other side is to minimize these and give it a mirror. Click on a little eyedropper and select the pot here. And now you can see it on both sides. Um, I'm just going to perhaps in object mode, just scale that down a bit and move it up. Okay. Just select these inward faces or edges and go S, Y and scale them in along the Y just to make it a little bit thicker. Okay, that's looking quite a bit better. So there we have the handles, they're all done. And what we'll do next is model the little chains where this is hanging off. So we're gonna go Shift A, 
and we're gonna add in a, let's go over a circle. We're gonna add in a circle. And in that circle, we're gonna um, tab into edit mode and we're gonna go RX90 and we're gonna hit enter. So we've rotated all of this in here by 90 degrees on the X. And um, in our front orthographic view, let's just grab half of these verts and go G, Z and move them up like this. And then we're gonna go A to select everything. And then we're gonna go E to extrude and then S to scale in and then S, Z and just scale up a little bit, just like that. And here you can see we have the flat plane of our chain. We can now go A to select everything and then E to extrude and we're gonna extrude it like this. So we have a chain. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go to our right orthographic view and we wanna press A to select everything. We wanna go E and just move it all here so that that origin point is in the middle this way as well, not just over here. It doesn't really matter. Um, we don't have to bring this one down so the origin point is in the middle. We can just leave it down here. What we are gonna do is we're gonna go Control R, add in a loop here, double click, Alt S if that's still active and scale out along the normals. And then we're gonna go A to select everything, Shift D to duplicate and then go Z to bring it up a little bit. And then go R, Z, 9, 0 and hit enter. So now we have this length of chain like that. So on this one, just kind of barely touching under there. And then we're gonna press A to select everything, Shift D, Z and move it up till it's just touching the bottom of that link. And then you can go Shift R and you can just repeat that action by going Shift R. So let's not make it too long, about that much should be fine. Then we're gonna tab back out and we're gonna go S and just scale that way down, okay? And once you've scaled it down, go um, Control A and apply the scale, okay? So you can now see, we can also go right click and go Shade Smooth, there we have a chain, very easy to make. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in our front orthographic view, we're gonna go G, move it over here, and then we're gonna go R and just rotate it till the top here, wherever that may be, touches that blue line here in the middle. And this doesn't have to be perfect. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and enable our transform pivot for the 3D cursor. The 3D cursor is in the middle of the scene. So if that chain active, we can go shift D to duplicate and then R Z nine zero and we can hit enter. And then we can just go shift R twice to repeat that action. And now it's perfectly all around here like that. What you could do, and I forgot to do this, um, let's just set the median point. Um, okay, let's just set it to individual origins just real quick. And let's just select each one of these chains by holding in shift and then tab into edit mode all at the same time. And what you could do, this is optional, but just select a vert on all of the bottom chains, go control L so they're all active. And if these ones and with the pivot transform set to um, individual origins, you can go Alt S and just fatten those ones up just a little bit to make them a little bit more bulky like that, okay? Um, obviously you can spend a lot more time on that. I did with my original practice, but um, there you go. Just make them look a little bit different. And let's just set that back to median point and go back into object mode, which we are obviously. Um, so here we have it. And let's just quickly go shift A. Let's just add in a MT, get a cube and go G, Z, move it to the top here and then scale it down a bit and then just take this whole pot and all of everything that has to do with this pot and a chain and then holding in shift, select that empty and go control P, object, key transform. And now that's all parented to this empty. So if we rotate it, you can see everything goes along. And now instead of moving each one of these pieces, we can just move it that way. And that won't affect the mirror thing that we're doing here because this mirror is referencing this pot, the origin point of this pot. So it, because that's also parented to the empty, we can move that all about and it doesn't hurt anything. So there we have it. The pot is made. It was actually quite remarkably easy. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go Shift A. Let's just add in a plane and let's just go S and scale it up about this much. Okay, so it needs to be probably about 10 to 14 times the width of the pot. We're then gonna select our camera. Let's just delete it. And let's just go into a front orthographic view and go Shift A. Let's just add in a new camera. And let's just go to our right orthographic view and go G and move it back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my output settings over here. And let's just change the X resolution to 1080 as well on the X. So we have a square aspect ratio. And then press zero to go into camera view. And for the focal length of the camera, I think we should go to the camera settings and make it something like 90. Anything between 90 and 90 eight worked really good for this when I was um, practicing. But what you're gonna do if the camera active, you're gonna go RX and just rotate it down like this and then G, Z and just move it up and then RX, rotate it down and just till you feel zooming in nice and close for now. And then I'm gonna select that plane and I might just go G, Y and just move it back a bit like that till I don't see it in the background though. You can still scale it even a little bit more. Okay, so there you have it. Let's now um, just with our plane selected, let's go control A and just apply the scale. Okay, that's very important. We're gonna tab into edit mode and with all of this selected, we're gonna right click and go subdivide. Go to this tab here and let's just bump that up 
about this much, maybe, okay, let's just type in 12. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our camera view and we're gonna select everything that is visible only in our camera view like that. And then we're gonna right click and go subdivide. And then we're gonna select an even smaller space like this. And we're gonna right click and go subdivide. And now what we can do is we can tab out. We can go to our modifiers. Let's give this a displacement modifier. Let's go to our texture properties here, go new and then come to the drop down and go cloud. We can now right click and go shade smooth. And now we got some random distortion to this ground plane here. You can also just come here and give it a subdivision surface modifier if you want to as well. So um, we'll work on that a little bit more, but for now we have our ground here. Um, what we're gonna do now is start adding in our um, particles first, and then we'll place our rocks and coals around that as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our plane, make sure it's active. We're gonna go to our particle settings and let's, or our particle properties here. Let's click on a plus to give it a particle system. We're gonna make it hair. Make sure to enable advanced and then also come to the source. And under the source here, you're gonna see use modifier stack. That's just gonna take these modifiers under our modifiers into account. Now, another thing we wanna do here, we don't want the grass everywhere. That's just unnecessary because we're only gonna be seeing this section, right? It'll be a waste of processing power. So let's go over to our object data properties for this plane. Let's go to our vertex groups, tab into edit mode and then go into your camera. And um, you should have these verts here that are on your camera view active. Okay, so I'm just gonna go and broadly select them like that. And what I'm gonna do, maybe even these ones here, so we don't have any bold spots. I'm gonna go and assign these verts to that group. So if I deselect them now and I click on select with that group active, you can see these are all in that active group. I'm gonna tab back out and let's go over to our particle settings and let's just go down to the vertex groups and under the density, you're gonna see that group. Now it's only distributed right here. So let's go back to the top. Let's go take our hair length down considerably. And let's now go down to our viewport or our children down here. Now um, I'm not gonna get into what particles are. I've done videos on that before, but more or less, these are just the parent particles and each one of them can spawn um, a children. So let's just come on interpolate it. And the display amount is how many are generated per parent. So in this case, it's 10. And the render amount is just the final amount you see in the render. So pretty easy stuff. Let's just take the display up to 30. If you do have a weaker computer, you might wanna leave the display amount lower, um, but 30 should be fine for most people. And you're gonna go to your render, make sure to enable B spline and also under the, um, Let's just go up, where is it? Uh, viewport display. We wanna take the strand steps up to three, okay? So what we have here is our little grass things, but they're just too straight. And we'll see right through to the ground. So let's just go down to our, under the children, let's go to the roughness and just take the ununiform value here up a little bit. And these values are really self-explanatory. I mean, size is size. Um, the end point here is just the, the um, direction of the little end points of the, hairs here or the particles. And you can mess around with some of these random sliders here. Uh, maybe don't go too curly with things. Um, that could look make it look too much like, like fuzz. And um, what we want is just these little things that look like hair. And um, what we can actually do is just quickly go to our render settings. Let's just quickly enable cycles. Actually, no, forget that. So what we're gonna do is let's just um, quickly go to our render settings. And we're just gonna quickly enable our ambient occlusion and our screen space reflections. Just real quick, we're not gonna get into the materials just yet. And let's just go Control Shift A. Let's just quickly add in a light. Let's just add in an area light and go G, Z. Just move it up just temporarily for now. And let's just go to our light settings. Give that quite a bit of strength and increase the size a bit. This is just temporary. We're gonna go Z and then go rendered. And let's just go into a camera view. And now you can kind of see those particles there. So the light here is just a quick example here so we can see that. Okay, there we have our grass. We'll work on it a little bit later. Um, but let's add in some rocks. A simple way to do rocks is to go Shift A, um, go to your mesh options, just add in a cube, tab into edit mode, just right click and subdivide that a few times. That should be enough. And then just get your proportional editing tool enabled and go to town. This is completely a part where you don't even have to follow the tutorial. Just shape it into something that looks like a rough rock. Press A to select everything and then just go to the smooth tool over here, just smooth it out a bit. Honestly, this is just so simple that it's, it's probably not even worth me having to show you guys how to make a rock, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Just something simple like that. Tab back into object mode, right click and go shade smooth. And then you can just go, if you want to go a step further, you can go um, give it a displace. 
go to your texture here, go new, and just give it something like a cloud. You do wanna go control A and apply that scale um, when you do scale things. In fact, I'm gonna just scale it down. I go to my top orthographic view and I'm just gonna go G and just move it here to the front. Just so I can see it there in the camera. You can see it is embedding in the grass. We'll fix that later. But there we have the rock. You can now go to your modifiers, give it a subdiv if you want. You can mess around with the strength here. You can mess around with the settings here. I'll let you figure that out. This isn't honestly that necessary. Just playing around with it, something basic and random will be fine. Um, before I duplicate this, I'm just gonna go and give it a quick material, just so we don't have to add it to each one later on. So um, yeah, I've just added it. I'll just call it a rock. I'm just gonna go down to the viewport display and just give it a rough color so I know that something has been added to that. And I'm gonna go Shift D and I'm just gonna move my way around like this. And I'm just gonna keep going and duplicating around the pot like that. Now they all look exactly the same, but don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna deal with that later on. Um, what you're gonna do is just come in here, rotate them in different ways. You can come to edit mode. You can you know mess around with the shape of each one of these. Um, that's something you guys can do in your own time. Because I'm doing a tutorial, I'm not gonna get too into that at the moment. But you get the idea here. Something very simple like that will do the job. If we now go Z and we go rendered, you can see that's looking pretty cool. Now we do want to make sure that these rocks are properly embedded down like this, but the problem problem is we also don't want the grass going through it. So all we have to do now is just select our plane, tab into edit mode, and just go to that vertex groups here. Or in fact, better yet, you can just go to um, your edit mode here and change it to uh, white painting. And we have that group active there. Let's just go over here to our brush, go to subtract, put the weight down a little bit. I mean the strength, put the strength down. And then you can just paint this way. This is all um, stuff, I'm not gonna get into the fundamentals of it because this tutorial is more to aimed towards people who know the basics yet, but you get the idea here. You can now come here and you can completely paint away these grasses, we don't want them. This is kind of like a, a dis distribution map here. So I'm gonna come here and uh, there we go. So because it doesn't make sense for grasses to be going through this spot here, I'm gonna go back in to object mode and now that is a lot better. So for the most part here, we have our scene. Um, what we're gonna do next is let's start by selecting our pot first and let's go to our shading workspace. We're gonna go into our camera view, we're gonna press Z and we're gonna go rendered. We already just added in that temporary light there and under our reading, render settings, we do have have ambient occlusion and screen space reflections turned on. So with the pot selected, we're gonna go new. Let's just call it pot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come and add in the texture. We're gonna go shift A, search and type in noise and just get a noise texture. We're gonna take the color and plug it into the base color of our principled. We're gonna go shift A, search and get a color ramp node and put it in between here on that cable. We're then gonna take the roughness amount here and just drag it up. And the detail we're gonna to set to 12. We're then gonna increase the contrast here of these two sliders. And this one up here, this node here, we're gonna make that um, particular slider, we're gonna make it a darker kind of brown. And this one, we're gonna leave at a nice black like that. Now, this does look a little bit flat, so we're gonna go Shift A, search, and get a color ramp node. Again, take the color, plug it into the factor. And this time we're gonna go Shift A, search, and get a bump, get a bump node, and now plug the color into the height and take the normal and plug it into the normal of your principled. And here you can see we have a pot material. Let's just take that strength way down. It's a little bit too intense. And we also need to come here and drag up that metallic value a little bit, but not too much because this is a rusty cast iron pot. Um, you can bring that roughness down a little bit if you have to, but that's more or less how I made the pot material. I might just make this brown here even darker. Okay, that looks fine and maybe increase that scale a bit. What we can do now is select the other parts that are connected to the pot and just go down and the drop down here and just give it that same pot material. So I'm gonna, in fact, let's just hold in shift and select all of these chains here. So they're all active. And while you're still holding in shift, select the pot and go control L and just link those materials. So make sure everything with the pot has that material and that's looking great. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna take this whole setup here and select it. Control C or command C just to copy it. You can also just right click and go copy. And let's just quickly select this ground, the, the ground floor and click new. And let's just delete these nodes here and right click and let's go paste. And now we have a um, dirt material here. All we have to do is make it less uh, reflective by bringing up the roughness. And let's just also um, take down the metallic all the way down to zero. We don't want this to be metallic. And let's just take that scale and make it 120. And the color here for the black, um, I'm gonna drag that slider down and just make it like a dark kind of brown like that. And that's all we need for dirt for now. What I'm gonna do is, um, while we still have that um, pot material in our clipboard, we're gonna now click on the rock. And remember we added the placeholder material to the rocks earlier. We're just gonna delete the principal node there with the other 
output node as well. Right click and then just paste. Once again, that's our pot material now added to these rocks. But with this one, we're gonna do things a little bit differently. Let's just get this um, slider here of the brown. Let's just put it up in um, value and make it a little bit more orangey and then drag this black value down. And now if we press Z and we go rendered, we can see that's what our rocks look like. And um, let's actually just take this strength and make it 0.3. And let's just go over to our scale on the noise and make it two. Okay, there we have some rocks. You can always adjust these sliders here to make it look however you want. Um, what we do need to do now, because the grass is needs its own material, so we're gonna just select the floor. Let's just go to our particles, and under the render, we're gonna see this thing just has a plain material. In fact, let's just go to our materials first. You can see we added just a material, we didn't name it, so let's just um, click on that. Let's just call it ground. Always important to name for that reason. Um, so we already created this ground material, but let's just go to our particles and let's just go under the render for that plane and let's just go, you see now you can see the material ground. All you have to do now is come up back to your material, click on the plus, go new, and let's just call this grass. Once again, sorry for this, let's just go back to the particles. And now if you click on materials, you should see another option called grass and click on that instead. Now for some reason, <laughs> I've called it glass it should be grass let me fix that and uh yeah so if you now press z and you go rendered you can see it's using that grass material that you can click on over here under your materials and if i just made it green or something like that you know like you can you get the idea you could just do something simple like that but i'm going to do it a little bit better by just um, simply coming to the ground material selecting all of these nodes Control c to copy it add it to the clipboard and then click on this grass material, just delete these nodes, and let's just right click and go paste. All I'm gonna do now is change these um, sliders a little bit, make them more green, and maybe a little bit brownish green over here, just so some random variation can be added to the grass. Okay, so something like that for now should be fine. Might just make this a little bit more realistic with the color. Okay, something like that for now is fine. There we have some simple grass. Now what we're also gonna do is go to our world settings. Let's take the color and just make it darker in value. So our environment is also a bit darker. It still looks pretty horrible, but once we um, add in some lights later and do some stuff with the bloom, it's gonna look a lot better. Let's just quickly now save as we're going and go Shift A, just add in a circle and go G, Z, move it up. S to scale it like that. Just bring it down a little bit and then tab into edit mode. And with this all active, you're gonna go Control F and you're gonna go grid fill. And then you're gonna just tab out. Let's just give this a subdivision surface modifier. And then we're also gonna to go to our materials, click new, and let's just call this soup. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our modifiers here and give this a displacement. And let's go to our texture properties, click new, and let's just give that a noise. Okay, it's important that we give it a noise. Go back to your modifiers and just bring that strength down. You can also mess around with the mid levels a little bit if it's not quite where it needs to be. We'll, we'll mess around with it a little bit later, but you get the idea here, just right click and also shade smooth. So now we have that in there and it's called soup. So we're gonna now work on this material and we're also gonna animate that so it looks like it's boiling. What we're gonna do is um, let's do a bit of reuse. So let's just actually select a pot material, make sure to select all of these nodes, Control C or Command C to copy them. Click on the soup material, delete these two nodes, and then just go Control V, or you can just right click and paste, and paste it in here. So now if we were to go um, Z and go rendered, we would see that um, metal material there, which is obviously not right. But what we can do now, however, is we can take these um, color sliders here on the color ramp for the soup, and let's change them into something soupy. And this really is where you can make it whatever you want because soup can really be made out of a bazillion different things. And um, I'm just gonna make the scale here. Um, let's just make the scale, leave it as it is, but let's just take the detail down to one. And the roughness, we're gonna make 0.4. And you can make these colors whatever you want. I'm just gonna go with something um, that I feel looks kind of brothy, a little bit soupy. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring this roughness all the way down, so it's very reflective. And for now, I'm also just gonna take the, the plane here and I'm just gonna disable the particle system under the modifiers just so we don't see it in the viewport. It's gonna slow things down a bit. So I'm just selecting that soup again. And you can see there we have a material. Wanna make sure it's not metallic and it has no roughness whatsoever. And with the bump here, we can increase the strength on that quite a bit and give it some, try messing around with these sliders a little bit. But if you press the spacebar, you can see it's um, boiling like that. 
And that looks all fine. I'm going to leave it at that. But um, let's also make the texture on here animate as well. You don't have to, but if you wanted to, it adds a little bit of extra realism. So what you can do is you can animate the slider. And the way you do that is you just hover over the scale here and you press I to insert a keyframe. Then you're going to go to your animation workspace. You're going to come over here to this drop down and give it a graph under this window, turn it into graph editor. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna press N over here to bring up the properties or the, the tools panel here. And now with that soup still selected, you can come here to the soup dropdown and then drop down on node shader. And there we have that keyframe we added in for that scale value. And all we have to do now is come here to the modifiers, add modifier, give it a noise. And um, let's just go Z and go render to see what it looks like. And now if you press the spacebar, you're gonna see, now I think I've actually added it to the wrong thing. So what we're gonna do is just actually copy this. So just click on this little clipboard here to copy this setup here. Let's just quickly go back into our shading workspace and just click on, hover over the detail here and press I, and then um, right click on top of the scale and go clear keyframes. So we only want the detail to have a keyframe. And now we're gonna go back to our animation and click on that and just paste that in, okay? But once again, this whole step is kind of optional. Um, you don't really have to do that. It's just to add a little bit of variation like that. You can, you can mess around with the scale, the strength to make it um, as just adding little variations like that. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do for now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my layout Oh yeah, of course, the coals, but let's, let's just add in some lights. Let's just go shift A, let's just quickly add in a point light and let's just move that point light to the side. Let's just give it a nice warm color and then increase the power. And now if we press Z and we go rendered, we can see that's what we have. So let's just bring it in under here and let's just go to our render settings under EV and enable bloom. And now we're gonna get that nice bloom as well. So what you can do now is under here, you can just go shift D to duplicate and just duplicate this a few times like that and then duplicate it and put it behind the pot here as well. Go into your camera view and then you can move these lights and you could kind of increase their, um, under your light settings, you can increase the radius a little bit and you can go shift D and duplicate another one. And you just get that nice orange rim lighting. And let's just select our plane here, go to our um, modifiers and just bring back that particle system. And there we have that so far. What we're gonna do is get rid of that main light we added in earlier. Just delete it, we don't need it, the main area light. And I'm just gonna go into solid for, for now, but we also wanna get rid of any other lights except just those um, rim lights we've added in. And even this by itself already looks really awesome. But if you wanted to, you can now come to your world and just slowly increase that value and make it a little bit bluish, to almost make it like nighttime. And um, what I did as well is I just created, grabbed these rocks, I modified them to make them all a little bit more different, but I also duplicated a few of them and scaled them down. Then I went to my shading workspace and I just clicked on this little number here to make it another material. So it's now rock 0 0.001. And you can just call that fire. And then what you can do is you can go shift A, search and get an emission, grab the emission, and then plug this color into the color of that emission. And then plug that emission output into the input of the material output. And you can just delete the principled and you can also delete these two nodes down here. So now that rock has a glow material and you can just increase the strength of the emission like that to make it kind of look like a coal that is burning. You can also come here to the color slider, give it a bit more contrast, a bit more saturation, and there you have some nice fire burning thingies down there. Um, I'm gonna also go to the materials, just change the viewport display so I can see it's a different thing. But other than that, you guys get the idea. At this point, you can duplicate these fire blocks as much as you want. Under here, you can rotate them all, warp them a little bit, um, I'm not gonna do that right now because this is just a tutorial, but that's what you guys can do in your own time. But you can see here, that's what we've made real quick. Um, let's now actually give it a test render. So um, let's go render, render image and see what it looks like. And here you can see there is the render. So um, you can add a whole bunch more light, a whole bunch more fire, um, bricks down here, add more density to the grass. I'm just keeping it low here with the, the number here just because um, I'm doing a tutorial. And I don't wanna slow things down too much, but I also added just a little bit of keyframe animation to this um, empty up here in my animation, but all really simple stuff. Um, and you can see here, that's pretty much it. If you wanted to render this out as animation, you can just go to output, select the folder on your desktop where you want it to go to, and then you can change your export format. You can make it a video or sequences. You can choose your encoder. I usually go for MP4. 
Um, but that's completely up to you. And then you can just go render and render animation. So this is not really about how to export animations. It's just how to do the actual animation here. So um, once you are happy with that, you can also go add in some additional things. Here you can see, I just animated um, in my original, I just animated this column coming up and I just gave it a volumetric material with some noise. And that makes it look like there's steam rising off the top. So that's something that's really simple. Um, this tutorial is already getting a little bit longer than I want it to be. So for now, I'm going to cut it off at this point. But I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this tutorial. And I hope it has been um, insightful and you guys can you know, do something cool with it. I will put my originals on my Patreon. You can check that in the description below. But yeah, I hope you guys have a good one and see you next time.